Hi, and welcome to another episode of Financial Minds Meet the Experts. I'm your host, Jamie Agostino. As you know, on this podcast, we're joined by financial industry experts to talk about topics, trends, and themes that credit union professionals need to know about. Today, we're welcoming Laura Whaley, Carolina Credit Union Foundation, and three Vizzo Financial Empowerment Grant recipients, Sarah Bell with Greenville Federal Credit Union, Kaylin Stowers with TCP Federal Credit Union, and Elizabeth Spell with Summit Credit Union. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you. Um, before we get started, would you mind just sharing a little bit about yourself and uh, your role with the credit union? Um, but before we do that, I'll start with Lauren, though, um, even though I know a lot of people already know Lauren that are joining us today. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for pulling us all together. Super excited to be with you guys. Um, so as Jamie said, I'm Lauren Whaley. I have the honor and privilege of running the Carolinas Credit Union Foundation. So we are the philanthropic arm for credit unions in North and South Carolina. And our mission is to empower and inspire credit unions to better their communities. So um, it certainly fits within the realm of this discussion here today, bettering our communities. So just super excited to be here. Um, I'm approaching my 20th year in the credit union space. Wow. Um, so really just thrilled beyond belief of, of where my career has taken me in the credit union um, family. So excited to be here. Jamie, thank you again for pulling us together. Oh, no problem. You're welcome. All right, Sarah, how about yourself? Yes. Well, thank you again, Jamie, for inviting me and Lauren. My name is Sarah Bell, and I'm with Greenville Federal Credit Union. I am our Director of Community Engagement and Business Development, and as part of that role, teach a lot of financial literacy. So we serve Greenville, South Carolina. It's a wonderful place to live. All right. All right. Uh, Kaylin Sowers, why don't you go ahead? Yes, um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Kaylin Stowers. I am with TCP Credit Union. We are a very small credit union that is ever growing, um, has really um, branched out and expanded and working on community involvement and getting our name out there. Um, I have been here for nine and a half years um, and I'm the assistant branch manager. But for a small credit union, a lot of you know, um, I wear many hats around here. So a title doesn't mean as much around here as other places. <laughs> Uh, we understand. We're very familiar with that as well. Um, all right, Elizabeth, why don't you share a little bit about yourself? Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Hi, I'm Alyssa Spell. I've been with Summit Credit Union since 2018. My previous background was actually in advertising sales. Uh, and coming to the credit union industry, it was just mind-blowing the impact um, that credit unions have across uh, the world, really. Um, I am the marketing team lead. Um, it is a, a great position, and our credit union has eight branches across North Carolina, so we have a wide footprint. Uh, and then, of course, marketing team lead, as uh, Kaylin said, you know, you wear many hats, and one of that, of course, is financial education and, and looking into ways into bettering that for our youth and our members. So it's been it's been awesome. All right. Um, well, thank you all again for joining me. So, Lauren, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick things off with you. Um, so tell me more about the empowerment grants, you know, how they work there in the Carolinas, you know, the qualifications, um, and how did the foundation go about uh, promoting them to the credit unions? Sure. Well, um, really, uh, so I love this program. It's like my favorite grant program that the foundation has ever had. Um, I was very, very excited when um, Aaron Doan, who's there at Vizzo, approached me about this idea. Um, and, and, you know, we kind of worked together and collaborated and, and, uh, and, and really kind of built out this program to be um, what credit unions need. Mm -hmm. And so essentially the, um, the Vizzo Financial Empowerment Grants fund projects or programs that, that credit unions can take um, back into their communities to empower them to reach their financial goals or to establish a better quality of life or, you know, to go into schools and do financial education programs. So, so many, many things that kind of fit under this umbrella of um, financial education and financial empowerment for credit unions in their communities. So um, 
I'm just I'm, I'm thrilled that the foundation gets to administer this program on behalf of Vizzo and of course all the other state foundations that get to implement it as well. Um, you know, Vizzo uh, committed a million dollars over the course of five years. So kudos to you guys um, for putting up those dollars to put back into the hands of credit unions to better serve their members. So um, the qualifications of the program are, um, I guess you could say they're very loose um, as long as they fall under the category of financial empowerment. So um uh you know partnering with organizations or implementing programs themselves again just to help members um, reach their financial goals and establish a better quality of life so um uh, we were we heavily promoted this program um, through all the channels of course social media through our newsletters in person in conversations you know at conferences wherever we had the opportunity to kind of tell that story um, we did and credit unions were absolutely thrilled to have the opportunity to apply for funding um, many of our small credit unions as as uh, Caitlin just said um, folks wear many many hats and dollars to get out into the community are sometimes limited so um, we were uh, again, just thrilled to be able to offer that opportunity for credit unions um, to think creatively, too, about how they wanted to um, bring what credit unions do so well into their communities and have the financial resources to be able to do that. Um, we had a lot of applications through uh, through the, the program um, here in the Carolinas. Um, we had 11 applications actually our first year, which I think that's a win. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, as the as my role within the foundation, sometimes it's kind of hard to give out money, honestly. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it is, believe it or not. Um, and to grab people's attention and to get them um, excited to put the work in to what it takes um, to implement this program. But we were excited. I mean, we have less than 100 credit unions in the Carolinas. So we were excited with a 10% response rate um, with 11 credit unions that applied. Um, and many of which were smaller credit unions. Um, and we evaluated kind of the ability of a credit union to um, um, pay for some of the expenses of the program versus maybe smaller credit unions that were um, less able to pay for it because of budgetary restraints. Um, so some were funded at the full $5,000, which was the cap that we put in place in our first year. Um, and then some were funded at a lower level than 5,000 to ensure that, you know, everybody could get funding for the program that they wanted to implement. I imagine next year it will be a bit more competitive as the word has spread um, about the amazing things that credit unions are doing in their communities with these grant dollars. So, um, again, just really excited about our first year um, and can't wait to, to launch our, our, our next grant cycle, which will be at the first of the year in 2025, which will be here before you know it, believe it or not. Yes, it will. Well, now I'm really excited to talk to the, these three individuals to find out what they're doing with these funds. So um, let's go ahead and let me um, ask the question. So, Sarah, let me start with you. Uh, why did your credit union apply for the empowerment grant? Yes. So we applied for the grant, one, because it's an amazing opportunity, but it really allowed us to expand some current program we have. Uh, and we have a really robust financial literacy program with various community organizations within Greenville. Mm -hmm. And now we're able to implement match savings and creating emergency savings fund is always really important in our financial literacy. And with these groups, there's often folks who their, their knowledge base is, is pretty weak and they are in lower income brackets. So emergency savings is just really, really valuable because they will miss being able to pay other bills. And so this is a great way for us to be able to implement that programming. And, you know, as match savings, there's some some skin in the game. So it's helping folks to realize that they need to change their habits. Yeah. You know, you're talking about, you know, the the savings, you know, how how is the credit union? Like, I, I understand how you're using the empowerment grant, but could you tell me a little bit how the program works then for the for the member? Yes. So we have uh, partnered with multiple organizations, Head Start, which mm -hmm. there are 17 locations in 
the upstate area where we where we serve a group called serenity village they work with um a, it, it's for women who are recovering um addicts and have children and then we've worked with Greer Relief, which is a, another entity that helps with all sorts of food insecurity. And um, they have a, a robust program where they uh, have classes and folks get dollars that they can then spend for various things. Um, so we already have these existing partnerships um, and we had been teaching financial literacy with them. But again, this helped to build. So we already felt like we had trust with a lot of the different folks who were attending, definitely with the organizations. Um, and then it helps to be able to encourage folks to actually create the emergency savings because you now believe through repeated interactions that this is going to help better your life. So some of the folks were already members organically and for some of them we ended up opening memberships to be able to serve them Um, and so that also was important because it helped drive a little bit of business for us as well Uh, but for many of them they weren't familiar with credit union or how credit unions impact uh, the community so it was it was just education in so many different ways um, working with the groups and and one thing that was uh, i think a really fun back is um, Head Start is a nationwide program, right? But we actually um, are partner of the year for the state of South Carolina, mm-hmm. in part because of our partnership with the financial literacy and being able to create the match savings. We did we did a little bit of other grants with them as well, but we had 35 people who would attend for every session and is continuing into this next school year and it's hybrid so some folks are in person and some um, are on, online and I just expect that to grow with the series happening at, uh, throughout the school year as well. Wow well that's wonderful congratulations that's that's fantastic. Yeah um, congrats thank Sarah. <laughs> thank you. All right uh, Elizabeth uh, why did your credit union apply for the empowerment grant? Yes, so I'm going to echo Sarah. Of course, it was an amazing opportunity, right, to be able to continue our our, uh, financial literacy program. Uh, But what's interesting with us at Summit Credit Union is financial education is super important to us. And in 2019, we kind of channeled that focus toward our youth in our community specifically. And we actually launched our first ever Taste of Reality Fair event. Okay. And with the events, you get to use a really interactive mobile app. And we worked with the Richard Miles Johnson Foundation to kind of uh, tailor that app to our needs. It's called the Bite of Reality app. And it provides kind of a fun and unique way to reach that younger audience. And essentially, we did apply for the grant to help us continue to invest in the app. Okay. But so every attendee of the Taste of Reality Fair is assigned a job, an income, a credit score, spouse, child, uh, and they navigate through eight different merchant booths representing monthly expenses for, for instance, housing, car payments, groceries, and lifestyle preferences. And every purchase is deducted from their virtual checking account within the app itself. Oh. Uh, it also offers some real life twists that we as adults face every day called the fickle finger of fate. Uh, so it introduces random lucky bonuses or unexpected expenses. So, for instance, mm-hmm. the water heater might have gone out or you won the lottery or grandma sent you money. So it's a great way to kind of show these these young adults what being an adult is like, right? Because we all have these fantasies when we're younger that, oh, I have so much money. I get to go to trips to Hawaii. And, of course, as we all know, responsibilities happen. And so, yeah, so it gives them a glimpse into that month of life as an adult. It's an amazing event, and we're very grateful for the opportunity. All right. So with the uh, Empowerment Grant Funds, are, are you saying that you were able to add more features to the app that you had established, or was the app what you funded from the grant? So the app uh, requires a yearly licensing fee. Oh, and so okay. for us to be able to continue usage of the app, you know, it costs okay. us funds every year, so it does allow us to, you know, um, invest in that, you know, yeah. and continue to do that. So, and instead use those funds where we were going to pay the licensing fee towards, you know, adding features as the course the landscape changes, right? As, you know, things change throughout the years. Yeah. Wow. 
Um, I, I've been to a few reality fairs, but I've never had an app that I got to use as as one of like the the businesses. I always like to be the nail salon because you know I could tell which yeah. ladies like to get their nails done, but no one ever wanted to pay for it. So I was always like, "Well, yeah. what are you are you going to take the acrylic off?" <laughs> so it'd be fun <laughs> to kind of use use the app with that. That would be really cool. So uh, I, I actually I, I want to kind of see that. I might have to to come over and see that. Um, I'm very intrigued oh, by that. Um, of course. <laughs> Cameron, I love the oh, oh go, sorry. sorry go ahead Sarah I was gonna say I love the reality of money simulations because I feel like at the end all of the students are deciding they're not going to have children for a long time <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that has been a few of the answers we've received yes and what's great about it too is we've done it in person which is amazing but we and of course when COVID happened as we all know it changed the landscape of everything and so we were able also to use it virtually too um, they have uh, offered kind of a virtual app that instead allows everyone to kind of go through the simulation at the same time. Um, and yes, you know, of course, at every event we would ask them, so what did you learn? Well, I don't want any children for a very, very long time. <laughs> a lot of the answers. So it's great to see and, and see those little faces, you know, learn. Yeah, well, I, I love what you said about, you know, the unforeseen things that come up, you know, yes. and, you know, I wish yes. my grandma would give me some money. Um, so that's nice. That that's like a reward in there, but me too. <laughs> Taste of reality. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sure is. All right. Kaylin, what about you? Uh, why did your credit union apply for the empowerment grant? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, it was an amazing opportunity, but ours was a lot different than the, what the other credit unions have said. Um, when I say small credit union, there's six employees here. And um, how can we take our ideas and make a real impact on the membership that we do have and the community that we have? We are in a rural area where the need is heavy. Um, so our grant funds, we really focused on how can we give back to the community? How can we make a difference? Um, so our grant funds were used for many different things. So okay. we have a program. Um, it's called the Blessing Box. I'm sure everybody has heard of, you know, the food pantries. Mm -hmm. um, but this is actually located in our parking lot. Um, so the funds from our grant, we use to not only um, help fill that blessing box, but to provide financial literacy for those members or for those non-members that are needing food, um, budgeting worksheets and um, offering the services for free. Hey, come in here if you need help making a budget, um, trying to help people get back on their feet. Um, we also took some of the funds and helped get our staff um, prepared to offer these services to them, offering um, some training for IRA and being certified in IRAs and how to help prepare those and financial counseling um, so that we had the staff prepared to help. And I, our blessing box and um, our financial counseling program has taken off since this. Um, we've really been able to to help more members than we had in the past and see a difference. And um, we've had some local um, organizations reach out to us and um, kind of talk to us like, how can we help you with this? And, um, you know, we had a marketing meeting this morning and they're like, um, okay, let's do something for Thanksgiving. What, you know, families can we help more? Um, and, you know, making sure that not only are they getting the food and um, providing for their families, but showing them there is credit unions out here, people helping people. Like it is not about, you know, you getting into the credit union, but it's actually about your well being and being able to say, we are a free service and we can help you, um, whatever the need is. So, um, helping them get back on th to their feet. So ours was a lot different than, um, others, but it just, we use ours in many different ways. Um, but for that aspect of it. Wow. That, that that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter, you know, how small the credit unions you're, you, you are, uh, you make such a huge impact in your community. And, and just hearing your story, I can see that uh, right away. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so, you know, Kaylin, I'm going to come back to you. How will the new program, you know, funded from the empowerment, how will it benefit your credit union as well as the members? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I know you're, you're kind of benefiting the members, you know, helping to provide that food, but I'm sure there's other things um, that are happening as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. So offering this training to our staff for them to be able to help this program has definitely helped our members notice they or our staff notice things in conversations with our members like oh we had you know a member come in yesterday oh i'm retiring this week you know being able to identify oh your 401k and um just giving them the additional training um and then also it has gained more membership from people you know coming to our lesson box and taking food and seeing the literacy coming in and opening an account um we are again, a lot different than other credit unions, we don't have an age or mileage limit on our autos. Um, so that is kind of our niche. Um, we want to be able to help anybody, whether they can afford a $50,000 car or they can afford a $4,000 car. So that is um, really expanded and kind of took off more because the need is there. And these people that are having a hard time, you know, feeding their families and getting to work, well, we do have solutions for it. And we do have a way that just because you can't purchase a new car doesn't mean you can't get a car so that you can go to work so you can afford, uh, afford food. Um, so it's kind of piggybacked off that blessing box, being able to reach more members that need that um, special kind of, it's not a special loan, it's just a huge auto, but it's something that we do different than other people. Um, and finding somewhere around here that doesn't have the 10 year mile or 10 year age limit or the 100,000 mile limit um, is pretty uncommon. So we finance a whole lot of autos for that, um, you know, group of individuals that isn't looking to purchase new or looking to purchase a $30,000 car. Wow. Wow. Well, again, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Elizabeth, I'm going to say, you know, same question to you. How will the new program funded from the empowerment grant benefit your credit union and your members? Well, I think it allows us to kind of continue the taste of reality there. So we've recently relaunched our, our youth program, which we're very excited about, um, and youth and student accounts. And so, of course, one of the great big benefits of, of these accounts and this program is the Taste of Reality Fair. And we are always looking for ways to expand on that. So, for instance, you know, last year, our first ever in-school event took place at a local high school in High Point, North Carolina. And, and what we found is, you know, doing something that wasn't exactly at our event, but at a school, you kind of see the motions of that and just the, the impact that the event made um, on the students' lives. And so thanks to um, Vizzo and um, the Carolina's Credit Union Foundation, you know, we were able to kind of expand that event and hold it uh, much more. So we know, we, of course, we were always looking for ways to be able to hold that event both in person and virtually uh, at our business partner events as much as we can. So to kind of further expand that, that footprint and that impact. Yeah. Nothing like giving, you know, the youth some confidence as they get ready to venture out yes. into the world with financial uh, literacy. So uh, Sarah, same question to you. How will the new program funded from the empowerment grant benefit your credit union and your members? Yeah. So I think it benefits our credit union in a variety of ways. It drives membership because we do open accounts for a number of the participants. And and I didn't mention earlier, this is a multi-part financial literacy series. So folks have to attend. It's not like a one and done. Um, so you really build a relationship, which is part of the credit union model. Uh, in addition, we do also, uh, like all of the companies have become company partners with us. So then all their employees are eligible to become members too. Uh, and like Head Start has a really big employee base. So that benefits our credit union and also the employees often attend as well. And so they um, take advantage of, of membership. Uh, the other area that's not sort of like a direct ROI is we have uh, a, a volunteer committee that we created actually this calendar year because volunteerism is such an important part of the credit union model and our employees get paid volunteer hours. But with that, I'm just trying to make it really robust to show that we are trying every avenue that we can to support ways that we um, engage within our community and being able to create match savings is really, I think, such an empowering, wonderful way to, to support. Um, and so I think it helps give validity to the new volunteer committee and get people excited uh, as well. All right. 
Well, again, I appreciate so much you all being here. So Lauren, any final thoughts for our listeners today? Um, uh, I guess be ready for an announcement in early 2025 so you can apply um, to receive funding. And I, I failed to mention this when we started, but there's there's no asset limit on this grant, um, which is unique to the foundation because primarily we normally um, provide grants to credit unions that um, are, are lower in assets, like under 100 million is our sweet spot for, um, for assisting small credit unions. But this is uh, available to credit unions of all asset sizes. Um, and really kind of, you know, there's so many uh, creative things that can be done with these grant dollars. Um, so maybe think outside the box when it comes to options that um, you may want to consider to add into your kind of portfolio of options as it relates to financial education and financial literacy in your communities. Um, I mean, the, the grants that we had this year were um, uh, wide ranging in terms of what they were going to do. We had a, a couple of match savings, um, uh, one particularly for uh, for young folks at the credit union to encourage younger members to come in and open IRA accounts to help with long term savings. Right. Um, we also had a uh, many folks that wanted to implement new financial education programs in their communities, one in partnership with their public library system. So this was going to be used to help pay for supplies and photocopies and, and new books. Um, there's lots of uh, organizations that you can partner with for financial education initiatives. Um, you know, the folks at Summit are using RMJ Foundation, which is essentially my counterpart in California and Nevada. Um, they have that Bite of Reality app. We have a bunch of different uh, simulations that we offer too. Um, we have a retirement fair, a retirement experience that we just launched with my counterparts at the Cornerstone Foundation. Um, we're getting ready to launch a, another uh, reality fair model um, that credit unions could implement in their communities. So uh, lots of new things on the horizon for the foundation when it comes to tools and resources that credit unions can use. But again, just think creatively, um, partner with organizations that you're already partnering with, like Sarah said. Um, to really kind of elevate what credit unions are doing in their communities. And um, again, you know, we're all working to build better communities and credit unions are certainly that um, that conduit to make that happen. So um, just excited for the next grant cycle and the creativity that credit unions come up with for new programs to better their communities. Yes. Well, hopefully after watching this uh, episode, you'll have so many applications next year in your inbox. You won't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, I mean, financial, it's one of those things. I mean, there's such a need. I mean, you even said about, you know, um, you know, people at retirement age, you know, they don't know what to do with their 401k. They don't know, you know, they need assistance as far as navigating all of those things. There's so much to do at that time period. Um, so financial literacy really has no age limit. <laughs> Um, it's, it's from youth to the whole way up. So, uh, amazing. Uh, so, uh, Caitlin, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, do you have any uh, final thoughts for our listeners today? Um, the only thing I would say is, you know, don't be anybody that's listening that thinks about applying, don't be afraid to apply for grants. Even if you don't know what you're doing, like reach out to other people that's applied for grants. Um, really think outside the box and um, all the worst thing that can happen is they'll say no. But even if you get a no, don't give up. Keep trying because um, these grants um, that we have received have really changed and helped my credit union grow to what it is and continue to help us um support us and um, take our our ideas and really turn it into a reality. So we are so appreciative and just don't be afraid to get a no. Um, just keep trying. All right. Sarah, any final thoughts for our listeners today? 
Well, I will echo in that folks should definitely apply. I mean, Lauren and Jeff and everybody at the foundation could not be more lovely to work with and they can answer any questions because I had a, I actually I have so many ideas. I want to apply for a bunch more. So maybe not too many people apply because I'd like to win again next year. <laughs> uh, but it, it is a simple process. And, uh, it, it, and if you needed some guidance, they are always there to be of assistance. All right. Yes, Lauren, I was just going to say, you know, during this whole process, Sarah, I mean, Lauren was emailing me back and forth asking questions and I was on vacation. I was like, you're just gonna have to call me on my personal cell phone. She's like, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so easy to easy going to work with. All right. Oh, thanks, y'all. <laughs> Elizabeth, uh, we'll, 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 we'll stop with you as far as any final thoughts for our listeners today. Of course, the foundation is an amazing partner for us at Summit Credit Union and Lauren and Jeff are wonderful to work with, as uh, Kaylin and Sarah had mentioned. And again, don't, do not be afraid to apply. Like Kaylin said, you may get a note. That's okay. There's always next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and this provided a world of difference for us, too. It allows us to be able to continue this great event and be able to um, use the Bite of Reality app. It does make a world of difference. Um, and the impact that you can make as a credit union is, is worth the effort in applying. So, right. I would do it. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. It, it's just, it's so wonderful to hear all these things that the credit unions are doing in their communities. And, you know, it also gives ideas, you know, for other credit unions. And I just, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. All right. This episode. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> this episode of Financial Minds Meet the Experts is brought to you by Vizzo Financial's blog. Did you know that Vizzo Financial has a blog? It's true. Our blog consists of articles written by our experts on staff, as well as our partner organizations. We cover the topics all credit unions need to know about, including the economy, cybersecurity, payments, leadership, DEI, and so much more. We, we release new articles on a weekly basis, and you can even subscribe to the blog and have them sent straight to your email. Uh, visit the resource pages of Vizzo Financial's website at www.vfccu.org to look at the Vizzo Financial blog today. As always, thanks for listening. Make it a great day.